in Java, there is an interface called the serializable interface. This interface is what is called as a marker interface. There are a few interfaces in Java which are called as marker interfaces. In a marker interface, there are no methods at all. So, what does it mean? So, your class doesn't really have to implement any methods because that marker interface doesn't have any methods. Normally, when an interface has methods, any class which implements that interface needs to implement the methods in that interface. But since the marker interface doesn't have any methods, it doesn't have to do anything. So, what is the purpose of this marker, marker interface? The marker interface lets Java know that this class, an object of this class can be persisted. Persisted means saved. So, it can be saved as bytes on disk or those bytes can be transmitted over the network to another JVM and when it is transmitted over the network to another JVM that JVM can read those bytes and reconstruct that object okay or if it is within the same JVM the or ex for example let's say you save an object uh, uh, serialize an object and save it as bytes on a file that file can be given to some somebody else and they can deserialize that file that means read the bytes from that file and reconstruct that object okay so that's what that's the ad advantage of using the serializable interface so the serializable interface when it saves an object it actually saves the entire object graph of an object that includes the current object the attributes that it inherits from its base classes and if that object contains other objects which are serializable then those objects are also serialized that's what the entire object graph means so the serializable will include all the instance attributes the instance attributes could be primitive types or they could be objects of another classes but those objects should also be serializable for it to serialize those objects so it will serialize all the instance attributes from the object which are also serializable and will also serialize all the instance attributes from the super classes okay the only instance attributes which are excluded from being serialized are those marked as transient so there is a keyword in java called transient so if you mark any attribute as transient it will not get serialized and what are the requirements for a class to be serializable class should always implement serializable interface it should always have a no argument constructor and finally there there is a optional attribute called serial version uid this basically repre represents the version number of a class so it checks the compatibility of a serialized objects with the current version of the class so if you have saved a file onto a disk with a certain serial version id and then later on you change your f your class okay then th then the class that you have and the serialized object they are not compatible because they have different serial version IDs so how do you serialize and deserialize let's say you want to serialize to a file so what you have to do is you have to use this class called object output stream remember the output stream is an abstract class which writes bytes but here you want to write the objects as bytes so that's why you use an object output stream so the object is saved as bytes now it is saved as bytes but where so what you have to do is you have to create a file output stream and then wrap it with an object output stream so the object output stream knows that it is actually finally going to a file similarly when you read from a file you have to use the object input stream and call the read object method so if you are reading a uh, the, ob the serialized object from a file on disk then you, you need to wrap a file input stream with an object input stream remember the decorator pattern which lets you add additional responsibilities by wrapping an object with another, another object so in this case you have to wrap a file input stream so you are reading from a file the file input stream will read from a file and give you bytes 
And what do you do with those bytes? You want to interpret those bytes as an object. So that's why you wrap those bytes with an object input stream to interpret the bytes as an object. So let's look at an example program. So I have a, this program called demo serializable. So what I do in this in this in this example program is to take a object of a car class, serialize it to a file on disk in C colon temp, and then finally I'll read that object which I have saved. And after reading the object that I have that I have saved, I'll compare the original object and the object that I have read from file. Okay, so I have this car object. It implements serializable, and if you see here, it has a lot of instance attributes. String itself is a class; it's not a primitive type. Whereas int is a primitive type, and I have a speed. The speed of a car is a transient attribute. It is something which keeps changing with time. So I, I mark it as transient, so it will never save it. Okay. And I have all the setter and getter getter methods. Okay. And I have a no argument constructor. That is extremely important. And you need to provide all the setters and getter getters. And then I have a two string method which prints the instance attributes and have an equals and equals method as well i need the equals method because at the after reading the f object from the f the object from the file i want to invoke the equals method with the object that was read from the file this is the original object and this is a object read from the file i want to make sure that this equals prints true because all I'm doing is taking the object that I've created, okay, write it into this file by invoking the right object, and I pass that my Camry. Once I've written the, f after I've saved the car object, I read the car object by using the file input stream on the, on this file, the my car file. And this file input stream I'm wrapping with an object input stream. Then I'm invoking the read object. Similarly, when I write it to a file, I take this object, but before I take the object, I create an object output stream. First, I take the car file, create a file output stream, and wrap it with an object output stream. So when I write the object, that object actually finally goes to this destination, which is the my car file. So it is going to save it in C colon temp my car dot serialize dot ser. So let's run this program, run as Java application. And then it first prints the car that was created. And then this is the car that was read from the disk. I'm printing by using the two string method on the car object. And then finally I'm comparing the two by invoking the equals method. So they are both equal now. Let's say, for example, I read the car the car from the disk right but before I do that let's say I change the uh, the, the year of the car okay say so I said I say my car dot set sorry my Camry dot set year to 2012 now they will not be equal because I've changed the year of the car. So it is false now. Because uh, when it was saved to disk, the year of the car was 2005. But after saving it to disk, I have changed this original object. And I'm setting the year to 2012. Now they are both not the same. 